Hey there. I need to find me a, a love puppet. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, here's one. Let me give it to you. Oh, 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 oh yeah. You like it like that? You like it? Let me get on top here. Oh, little 69 action. Oh, you're not done yet. I ain't done yet. Oh, yeah. One more. One more time. Oh, I've got the colors. I got the lighting. Oh, we're in the mood of finishing. Oh, yeah. I know you like it like that. Oh, yeah, baby. Just want to say, hey, guys, it's Klaus. Let me introduce to you Carlos Terminator XX7 from the GLHF clan. Shout out to you guys. And the first thing he does in this game is type to everyone that this map is broken. This map is broken. I'm playing this game and I'm on this map and it's broken. And I want everyone to know. This map is broken. I'm typing it in chat so you all know. All 14 of you on my team. This map is broken. But I'm still showing your replay, buddy. Because you sent it in. And even though you think this map is broken, I'm going to somehow try and convince you that uh, perhaps, perhaps it is not broken. Perhaps it, it's just new and you are not sure where to go. And maybe after you finish this game, uh, you will realize that uh, it's not that bad a map. It's just that different. It's just, you know, there's a lot of cover and uh, it's not like it was before and... You might have to play it a little bit differently than you did uh, in the past. And you are in a light tank, and there's lots of cover. So maybe you could enjoy this map. Why not, huh? This map used to be a camp fest map in, uh, in the sense that everyone camped on either side of the river. And uh, they've made changes now. There's lots of cover along the north boundary and the south boundary so that it's very easy to cross the river now as you see in the southwest some of the his team has crossed a t10 and a centurion have crossed and the enemy has crossed the river on this side because there's lots of cover now enabling uh, the teams to easily cross the river and now if you look at the mini map you'll notice that it's more of a south versus north fight you see that uh, the, the green guys are mainly in the south and the the purple guys are mainly in the north it's a north-south map now, whereas in the past, it was more of an east-west map. It would be, most of his team would be on the east, and most of the enemy team would be on the west. And they'd be far apart, and it would be like, take all game. And people would, you know, fight east-west. But now they fight north-south, so it's broken, because east-west was better than north-south, I guess, for some people. But some people like east-west, uh, or, or north-south more than east. I don't know. What's the difference? It's just a different map. Just play it. It's not broken. It's just different. Look, there's a guy over there. You can aim and you can shoot. See? It's not broken. It, you could have done that on, on the other map, but he would have been in a different spot. There might not have been a tree there or a bush. Right? Or a rock. Or the undulation in the topography might have been slightly different. You would have had to shoot him from a different angle. But it's changed. That's what happens. Progress. Right? Things change. Not everything stays there. Everyone is so freaked out all the time when something changes. Oh my god. Scientists have done some studying for the past 37 years and they've discovered that the Earth's temperature is changing. Really? It's changing? Oh my god. It, it's changing? Yes, yes. They've also discovered that it has changed throughout the 4 billion year history of the earth it has changed all the time it's never stayed the same it's gone up and it's gone down oh god damn it it's gone up and down it's changing now yes it's changing now well is it going is it going down it better not be going down because i fucking hate the cold no it's not going down it's going up what it's going up well what are we gonna do about it uh we're gonna panic and we're gonna make you pay more for your gas and charge you five cents for your plastic bags and we're going to have green fees when you travel on airplanes, when you go to on holiday, because the temperature's going up on, on Earth. God damn it. Well, what's going to happen when the temperature goes up? Well, I'm not sure. The last time the temperature rose 
a whole assortment of new species flourished and frolicked in the warm weather and enjoyed the abundance of fruit and vegetables that sprouted from all corners of the globe because it was warm and nice. But we can't have that. We need more polar bears. They don't like it where it's, where it's hot. God damn it, we better try our best to get the temperature to stay the same. We need it to stay the same. But it's never stayed the same. Well, how are we going to make it the same? We don't even know how to make it the same. Let's shoot off some balloons into the sky and spend billions of dollars on satellites so we can track the weather patterns and convince ourselves that, yes, it is in fact. Look, there's some a cloud formation there that has not been observed for the past three months. The climate is changing! You know, like no one can handle change. And I am not a climate denier or what. Is, what do we call We used to call it global warming, but now we call it uh, climate change because is, I don't know why, because it's more politically correct to say climate change. That, no, I know why. It's because global warming was the first buzz phrase. And then that they could not uh, point at different weather events that weren't necessarily warming events. They couldn't like if there was a big blizzard or snowstorm, they couldn't say, aha, aha, global warming, because, you know, everyone would realize you're a fucking moron. So they say, well, wait a minute, we'll just change it. We'll call it climate change. So now when there's a big blizzard or a snowstorm, they can go, ah, 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 ah look, climate change, right? It's a more encompassing, uh, which enables them to tax more, uh, you know, if you want to buy something, uh, everything that you buy now will somehow in its own way uh, cause the climate to change. So you should pay more for it is I, I think what the motivation is. But uh, let me clarify uh, for those of you who are on either side of the fence here. I am not a climate quote unquote climate change denier. I realize that the climate is changing. It always has and always will. I am against polluting and I think that uh, throwing garbage around and uh, spewing chemicals everywhere and pumping CO2 and toxic emissions into our atmosphere is a dumb fucking thing to do. I agree with that. But um, the one thing I also understand is that if the earth uh, gets warmer, then species that prefer it uh, colder weather will have a harder time and species that prefer warmer weather will have a much easier time. Now, it just so happens that 99% of species prefer warmer weather. So when the earth gets warmer, there's millions of new species, birds and mammals and all sorts of things that frolic around everywhere eating all the great food that grows much better uh, in the warm weather, right? Whereas other animals like, for example, the polar bear, is gonna, he's gonna holy fuck it's hot around here and he's because i can't cross this uh, ocean because there's no more ice and those fucking seals can't catch them anymore you know but really i don't give a flying fuck about the polar bears why because polar bears eat humans and like so yeah have you ever thought of it that way i uh, squirrels raccoons birds you know they're fine there's going to be a lot more of them. And in the as you trace the full timeline of the Earth uh, from its inception till now, the full, what is it, almost five billion years. I've watched that, uh, uh, you see that nature show you get on Netflix where the guy has the calendar and he has uh, the, in one month, this is the whole history of the Earth. And then the humans is the last pencil width sliver of the last day. That's how long we've been here. And oh my God, it's good. You know, the, once we're gone, once we uh, survive for the width of a crayon uh, on the timeline that's uh, 200 feet long of the history of the Earth, the Earth will get either warmer, colder, or warmer and colder, or colder and then warmer, whatever the fuck it wants. And it really won't care about any of the plastic bags that we've littered it with or the holes we've drilled in the ground or some of the uh, funny looking condos that we've built on the west coast in California. That, it'll have nothing, uh, will not uh, care in one iota either way what we've done, what we've left or, or what's happened. Like does anyone today give a flying fuck what the dinosaurs did uh, 300 million years ago? Like do we care that they ate all the vegetation or they farted a lot or whatever the hell they did? Does anyone care? No. And in fact, and in fact, I, I will dispute the whole premise of everything that's discussed by scientists. Uh, and one in particular, Einstein figured it out and no one, 
no one actually clues into what he discovered. Uh, Einstein discovered that uh, basically the time space continuum, that time is not a constant, uh, right? energy and time and, and, and everything, right? Did E equals MC squared, the theory of relativity. Basically, to summarize it is time does not flow uh, as we perceive time. You know how, like, you've listened to me now for 10 minutes, and you're probably wondering, holy fuck, what's this guy talking about? But you've listened to me for 10 minutes and 27 seconds. You understand what 10 minutes and 27 seconds means, because that is what we call time, and time progresses in a linear fashion for us on Earth, right? But what Einstein figured out is that uh, time is not a constant, and time changes its behavior depending on how close to the speed of light uh, that you are traveling. And we're speaking of heavenly bodies and the universe here, where there are for rocks and stars and things zooming around, and light traveling, and uh, gamma rays and photons and all these things uh, that are traveling at different fractions of the speed of light. And for all of those things, all those elements in the universe, time behaves differently. We, he, he proved that as you approach the speed of light, time slows down. So you ever see those movies where, like, you know, some guy flies off at uh, 0.8 speed of light in his spaceship, uh, and he goes off to, like, do something important, whatever the movie's about, and then he comes back, right? When he comes back, it only took him uh, uh, 11 hours to complete his mission, and then he comes back, and the Earth... He comes back and it's 372 years later and everyone he knew died you know, because that's Einstein's theory and they've, we've proven this using mathematics and experimentation. Well, think about that for a second. Like we think we understand the universe. We look into our telescopes and we look, quote unquote, back in time. The farther we see with the telescope, the farther the object is, is light from a star uh, 300 light years away that light would not have gotten to us for so many years. We are looking back uh, 3.8 billion years in history, in time, as we look through the telescope. Well, bullshit. Bullshit. Think about it. Uh, uh, that actual ray of light, its timeline is completely different. Time is basically at a standstill for a ray of light. It's traveling at the speed of light. Time has stopped when you travel at the speed of light. When you travel at 0.8, the speed of light, it's an exponential function that you could look up if you know anything about Einstein's theory. And so as we sit here on Earth and uh, 12 minutes and 53 seconds of the video have gone by, someone else in a different galaxy somewhere else in the universe who, who happens to be sitting on a rock that is traveling at 0.6, the speed of light, while we have uh, progressed this 13 minutes into the video, that person in a different part of the galaxy who's traveling at a different speed than us, ha 14 years have gone by. So even discussing the concept of a linear time frame uh, between us, it makes no sense. And when you look back uh, through a telescope at a star uh, so far away and you make the comment that though that happened uh, four billion years ago well if in the stars perspective it happened uh, three seconds ago so the time frame uh, between the two does not match it doesn't make sense we just discuss time as we understand it and are oblivious to how time progresses for the things that we observe that have nothing to do with us it's all a mishmash everywhere in the universe time progresses differently which makes it impossible to put a timeline to anything. Is the Earth 4 billion years old? To us, in our time perspective it is, but in the time perspective of a, a tiny neutrino particle traveling at the speed of light that came out of the, the first star in the Big Bang, from its perspective, the Earth is like two seconds old. In, in, there is a time frame in the universe that exists where we are right now at this moment still in the Big Bang. From the perspective of a particle of pure energy, the universe is infinite and non-existent at the same time. In fact, from the perspective of that particle of pure energy, the concept of time itself is irrelevant. That's what Einstein proved. Everything we discuss from our human perspective is completely irrelevant. 
the Earth is four and a half billion years old? Yeah, well, maybe from our perspective and our concept of what time is, but to the universe's concept of what time is, no. It doesn't give a flying fuck how old the Earth is, and it doesn't matter whether the temperature is going up or down. And uh, I got a little uh, sidetracked there, uh, and uh, we, we kind of missed the game, but he did pretty well. Uh, Carlos Terminator, way to go. And come on, see, the map doesn't suck. It's all a matter of perspective. It, it's all relative. Huh? <laughs> Get it, Carlos? It's all relative. Once you think about it, uh, you'll only confuse yourself. I'll tell you that much.